Good morning, girls. Good, Good morning, morning, Mr. Axel. Level 16 will be your final year at Vistalis. A clean girl embraces obedience. A clean girl embodies sweetness. A clean girl is always fit and temperate. A clean girl, 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 a clean girl. Level 16 is not like the other levels. Hello, it's Nicole and welcome to Chroma Film TV. In this video, I'll be going over Level 16, a film that reflects a lot of elements of society, the system, or the machine. Disguised as a story about girls seeking adoption with terrifying results. And without further ado, let's get into it. At the Vistalis Academy School for Girls, students live in a rundown building and follow a strict regimen of vitamins, skin care, and etiquette training to be adopted by loving families, but the true outcome for the girls is only skin deep. The girls of the school are assigned to levels where they learn everything there is to know to be perfect young women. Level 16 is the final level of training before they graduate and are united with their adoptive families. The film opens with young girls in white standing in line, waiting for their turn to get to a singular sink where they are directed to wash and moisturize their faces in front of a camera. After one of the girls loses her place in line after trying to help another little girl, she's punished despite the fact that her mistake was due to helping someone else. As the girls grew, they learned how to stay clean and become proper young women by continuing their daily regimens, following the rules with no backtalk, and being willing to report anyone that does the opposite. Vivian, the little girl that was harshly punished in the beginning, grew up to be the leader of her level, serious about the rules and making sure everyone followed them, but not at all empathetic about the feelings or concerns of her level mates. For a time, the girls follow the same routine until one day, Sophia, the little girl that caused Vivian to lose her place in line when they were younger, starts to tell Vivian about some of the secrets of the school. Initially, Vivian is still holding a grudge towards Sophia because of what happened to them when they were younger, but eventually, she starts listening to Sophia and begins her own investigation, leading to a discovery that shocked her into a realization of what was happening around them. After years of going through the same routine, routines, abusive punishments, and no ability to express how they felt without recourse, Vivian discovers that their accomplishments were all in vain, and they weren't there to be adopted, they were there to be harvested, providing young and healthy skin to wealthy, older female clients. Vivian and Sophia attempted to warn the rest of their level to no avail initially, but after seeing a demonstration of the transplant procedure for themselves, they joined Vivian and Sophia in an attempt to escape the school. Before they could get away, the girls were confronted by staff and threatened to return to the building. After some tussling, Vivian and Sophia were able to get away, but the other girls were left to the hands of the staff and closer to an early graduation ceremony. The story ends with the rescue of Vivian and Sophia and and showed the despair on Vivian's face as she realized she was headed into a world she knew nothing about. The film gave a tiny representation of the horrors a child could face if they come in contact with evil people that want to take advantage of them, but it also showed a society through the lens of a micro or a small community, a community that's a part of a bigger system. One of the things I thought of after watching the film was of the mouse utopia experiment and thought of how it related to their living conditions, which I'll discuss later on. But I thought of the machine or the beast system as a whole and how it relates to the levels of the school. At some point, most if not all of us have heard of the machine, the beast system or the matrix, even if in name only. The matrix is everywhere. It is all around us. You can see it when you look out your window or when you turn on your television. You can feel it when you go to work, when you go to church, when you pay your taxes. It is the world that has been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth. Like everyone else, you were born into bondage, born into a prison that you cannot smell or taste or touch. A prison for your mind. 
The film showed the inner workings of a mini or a very small society separated by class according to floors with the cleanest, most qualified class on level 16. You have completed level 15. At least this is what the girls thought initially. Level 16 appears to have one purpose until the mechanics are looked at a little closer and it becomes clear that the manufactured products of the machine don't work as they were previously described. The girls were forced to stay clean, a clean girl, meaning they followed the rules and acted like perfect little girls, but it had nothing to do with how they treated their level mates. The girls didn't have a certain religion they followed by name, but their daily activities were carried out religiously, keeping a daily regimen based on the rules of the school instead of based on their own understanding of why they were keeping the schedule. In many ways, the elements of the film addresses how the morals set by society aren't necessarily in place to benefit the members of that society. The idea of beauty in the film had less to do with the girl's features and more to do with ensuring that the product was perfect without blemish. This reminded me of another review I did for Paradise Hills. The girls in that film were forced to change their appearances and the way they acted for their families with harsh punishments for those that chose not to follow the program. As it is in these movies, social media and influencers are put in place in front of young impressionable minds, making them more susceptible to believe that the worth of a person is only in how they look or how they appear and not the heart or the soul of the person. I believe that apart from the broken or toxic families, this is one of the main causes for the rise of narcissism or narcissistic traits seen especially in Western society today. The building where they resided looked pristine in certain areas, but the dorm areas where the girls lived were falling apart, which reminded me a lot of the reported issues of government housing. It also made me think of the Mouse Utopia experiment that I talked about earlier, and how this study found that placing a large number of people in close proximity to one another for extended periods of time can have negative results. Dr. Calhoun used white mice to study population growth and its effects on individual behavior. Dr. Calhoun concluded that the mice could not effectively deal with the repeated contact of so many individuals. Currently, Dr. James Hill has taken the basics of the Calhoun experiment to study social behavior even more closely. Though these studies use animals, the findings about population growth and individual behavior are being closely compared to our own human population. The girls were around each other all the time, with the only privacy being the wall between the bathroom stalls. On top of the regimen and the punishments, there was a lot of tension between the girls. One girl was given the invisible crown of leadership, another was willing to rat out anyone not following the rules, and everyone else was paranoid, afraid to do anything that would cause them to face repercussion. As the film continued, an atmosphere of chaos simmering under a veil of order continued to grow until the girls learned why they were really there. The girls' regimens consisted of daily vitamins and the occasional tap to keep them healthy. At least that's what they were told. The vitamins were actually sleeping pills and the tap was to shut folks up by making them loopy. I'm not going to go into how this relates to the world we live in today, but the idea of a person believing that something is for their good, only to find out that it served an entirely different purpose came to mind. The girls only learned what they needed to know to live within their mini society. They weren't taught how to read, asking questions, or speaking up was discouraged, and the school's success hinged on the girls' ability to stay ignorant about what was really happening around them. Schooling in Western society has its purpose, but like in the film, it doesn't teach anyone how to sustain on their own without having to depend on the system for survival. Yes, degrees can be obtained and money can be made, but if the system were to 
crashed completely, no grocery stores, no electricity, etc., how many people would be able to survive and how many people would need to stand in line waiting for a handout that will only be given if certain rights or privileges are taken away? The leaders of the school were like foster parents for the girls. They provided guidance and were the authorities, appearing to serve in the girls' best interest, but were simply keeping the girls in check until they were mature enough to graduate. Some that are put in place to guide or to have authority over society have the appearance of good leadership, but have a purpose that serves a totally different agenda. During the doctor visit, Vivian spoke of a movie she wanted to watch, the only movie they were allowed to watch, an old black and white film with an actress that was the epitome of the kind of women they were supposed to be. Because of their youth, naivete, and ignorance, they were easily taken advantage of. The film doesn't show how the girls ended up in the school, but the whole premise of the film is based on the result of a broken family. Either the girls were taken against their will, or the parents voluntarily gave up their rights, leaving the child with no natural family, only having the other girls to look to. The doctor and his wife used divide and conquer to encourage the girls to report one another. This discouraged the girls from talking to one another, making it easier to keep them in line. The use of divide and conquer is very prevalent today and used in various societies that keeps the citizens from banding together to take control in whatever capacity. People are pitted against one another based on color, class, etc. to keep everyone from using their collective power to make changes that could benefit everyone. Vivian's learning of the inner workings of the school, the machine, was one show of an awakening, but what was interesting was who she initially got the information from, Sophia. The name Sophia originates in the Greek and means wisdom. It's also a name associated with Gnosticism, a branch of Christianity where traditional biblical beliefs are turned on their heads. The name Vivian has been sourced as originating in the Latin or the French and means to be alive or lively, tying into my theory that the names used for the girls have a deeper meaning. On the one hand, Vivian received life-saving information from a wise friend who claimed to care about her, but flipped over and upside down. This same so-called friend caused Vivian to endure childhood trauma, only spoke up when it benefited her, and held a name associated with a fallen god said to be the original source of human suffering. Sophia watched and knew what was happening to the other girls before informing Vivian of what was going on. According to Sophia, she was fearful of Vivian's reaction and this was the cause for her not saying anything earlier. But the more Sophia talked, it's realized that the only reason that she said anything to Vivian was because she wanted to escape herself but needed Vivian to help her do it. Sophia was cowardly but recognized Vivian's strengths and knew she was her best chance at getting away. Sophia gave Vivian the knowledge of what was going on in the school but only after her own botched escape attempt. Realizing she couldn't escape on her own, she turned to Vivian knowing that her leadership and bravery qualities would result in a better chance of escaping. This could be a coincidence, but if on purpose, these names could have been used based on the origins of their meanings or it could be a warning about the type of awakening one may experience. The awakening might give more knowledge, but that comes with many holes that are easy to fall into and get lost in, traps that could keep someone from discovering their purpose or reaching their full potential. To me, this shows how important it is to have the ability to discern the nature or the motive of a person, an awakening that only comes from the Holy Spirit.
The film is classified as sci-fi but barely spent any time there so there wasn't much to draw from in terms of trying to relate it to a dystopian future. Pretty much all the elements except for the full skin transplant facelift already exist and existed when the film was released in 2018. It took on an approach about society and touched on elements of a system that appeared one way until the inner workings were discovered. The truth coming from a character named Sophia adds a moral layer that mirrors the matrix or the upside down world we see today where the absolute truth is traded in for the appearance of truth better known as a lie. A selfish society where many people only choose to help others if it benefits them first. This film, like many others categorized as sci-fi that leans more towards the supernatural, offers a lot of confusion while inserting subtle hints, signals, or sigils that get repeated over and over until those ideas and the theories behind those ideas become familiar, acceptable, then normalized, or mainstream over time. The byproduct of a machine that has the ability to fabricate a reality until it becomes the reality. If you want to watch this film, it's available here. A transcript of this video will be available on chromafilmtv.com within 24 hours if you want to read it there. If you like this video, consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. And yeah, on that note, have an awesome day. Peace.